chapter seven. seven. You see what I mean? Now, King David came out of all of her pain. Think of that. All of her pain. Imagine what happens in our lives if we can handle our pain God's way. If we can handle our pain and keep it in his hands. Keep focusing on him no matter how badly we hurt. No matter how much life has, has, has dragged us down. No matter how many people come against us. Keep our focus on God. Right, now we're going to read. Verse 36, and one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to me. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, Now oh, this man, if he were a prophet, uh, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. Now listen, before I go any further, Pat's two cents. Listen, when you go into an uncomfortable situation, people are looking at you. They're not just looking at you, they're looking down at you. They're looking at you like you're nothing, like you're something that crawled out from under a rock. You know how hard that is to walk past those kind of looks to deal with that, that's very difficult. She's already laden with shame and everything from where she came, but she just had to worship her Lord. Now listen, see we don't realize how God, that's important to him when we go past our own shame to worship him. Mm. Okay, listen. This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him. For she is a sinner. Now the word toucheth, that has a connotation. If a woman comes from a background of being loose and, you know, sexually loose or, you know, foot loose, fancy free out there in the world, she's not too clean. So when she touches a man, another man's going to look at that because the Bible says, to the pure, all things are pure. But to the defiled, all things are defiled. And when people have a defiled mindset and they're uh, suspicious and they're critical of other people, everything somebody does, they're going to find something nasty in it. So this man, when he said, he, this woman that touches him, that was a nasty connotation. That wasn't like touching him, you know, nice. No, touching him like, look at her touching him. Look how she's clean. That was judgment. And we can sometimes be very judgmental. All right. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors, the one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will, will love him the most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgaveth most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. I can look at some of y'all now and say, I know some of y'all wouldn't kiss anybody's feet. This woman kissed this man's feet, and I know Jesus had not just stepped out of a shower. 
Think about that. My head with oil, thou didst anoint. But this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loveth much. Listen to this, you guys. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. Let me stop there for a second and add, add my two cents. There are times when we as born again Christians, we're living for God. We don't have much of a background of late of blatant sins and horrible, you know, crimes we've committed and none of that. And sometimes because we haven't done all that, we think, well, we're okay, you know, we you know, we weren't, you know, we were sinners saved by grace, but we don't see the ugly that was really in us. And when you don't see it, you don't repent of it. You don't repent of it, you don't grow. So what ends up happening is when other people go through changes, you don't have much compassion for them because you didn't do that. Why they got to do it? Something must be wrong with them. They must not love the Lord like they think. If they were like me, I love the Lord, then why don't they get their act together? Because you ain't been where they've been. You've never, you don't know the pain they've come up in. Now, okay, let me go finish this chapter and then I'm going to make my point. I'm going to repeat verse 47 because it's so heavy. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven. For she loveth much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said unto the woman, thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. Now, listen. When you are dealing, <laughs> when you are dealing with that type of pain, we don't always understand another person's pain. God gave me this illustration. It just blew me away. If you look at a race, if I were to, I wish I had a, a, a board to illustrate, but if you look at a race, you look at a racetrack, and you see the starting line, maybe right here, finishing line, right about there. Imagine that is years and years and miles and miles of a race. That's a race. The woman who the Bible didn't even give a name to. Now this is a trip. This is what I love about Jesus. He recognizes those that nobody else counts. He honors people that other people count just scratch off their list. They don't even care about them. They don't think they're worth the time. Whoever wrote this didn't think that woman was worth even writing her name. But Jesus said, whatever you do, whoever brings this word, you make sure she is recorded. Record what she did. He gave honor to what she did. Now, she was a no-name nobody like some of us have been back in the day. But I want you to know, no matter where you've come from, no matter what your beginnings have been, no matter how small your accomplishments, God counts you as something mighty. He counts you as something very important in his heart. He recognizes you when other people look right through you. That's what I love about God. There are some women that are treated with total disrespect, total disregard in their own house. But that doesn't come from God. That's not God's way of love. Now, when you look at this woman, where she came from, and many have to deal with this. Some in church, many out of church. But when you look at where she came from, she came from a raw beginning. Now, you got the racetrack from here to there. She came from so far back, she's outside the door. She's nowhere near the starting line. So you get a few Christians, and I got to go sideways. So let's say from here to there, that's the finish line. Okay, you get a few Christians, here's the starting line. And they start out, they're raised in church, they're doing good. They grow a little bit. They grow a little bit more. Hallelujah, praise God. They commit a sin, whatever. Lord, forgive me. They go a little further. They do good. 
They're growing. But then you get somebody who came way out from outside the door and they're crawling on their knees. They, they want to hide. They don't want anybody to see them because they're ashamed because they know from whence they came. They know they came from a dirty background. Now, what I say, we have to be careful how we treat those people. That's true. We have to be very careful. We don't know if that woman was molested by her father, we don't know if that woman was raped by her brothers, by her neighbors, by her father's friends. We don't know what that woman came up into. We don't know what burden she had to bear. Was she beaten? Was she kicked out on the street at 10 years old? Did she have to go into prostitution just to eat? We don't know, do we? But, a lot of times, those of us who don't have a lot of background of, of what, what do they call it, junk in the trunk? If we don't have a lot of junk in the trunk, we don't get her junk. We can't relate. And she may be slipping and sliding, and, but she's not peeping and hiding. She's really trying to get it straight. Well, she's tripping over her own feet all the way. And she's still trying to get to the starting line. She's not even on the race track yet. But she asked God to forgive her. And she's on her way. She's just getting started. But she's got to come from so far to get to start. Do you hear what I'm saying? Now the church folks are right in here. They're doing great. She's got to come so far that if she just gets to the starting line, oh, oh, oh Lord, you took my bitterness away. Thank you, Lord. Oh, oh God. Oh, Lord, you're taking my shame away. Thank you, Lord. I'm feeling this, you guys. That's good. Amen. Oh, oh you took, you took my, my past away. Thank you, Lord. Now, she can't get much further than this. Church folks are on down the road. They're doing great. They're praising, putting their tambourines. But here's the thing. The church person may have come from here and going to about here and then walk. But she came all the way around from the back door, all the way around, past the, the starting line, and just made it maybe two or three steps ahead of it. Who came the furthest? Who made the most progress? She did. She did. And she may be backwards in the eyesight of all the saints. She may be a nobody. She may be jacked up, messed up, tore up from the floor up compared to us saints. But that does not mean that God sees that as her being a nobody or a failure. 